Hello children of class 6, welcome to other session of chemistry on classroom TV. I hope you are enjoying classes, staying safe during COVID times and going through each and every content on classroom TV. In our last class, we have completed our first chapter of chemistry, materials and things. And we learnt like how the different objects are made up of one material or we can find even the objects which are made up of more than one material also. And even we have discussed the different properties of materials, transparent materials, opaque materials, translucent substances or materials and even we have learned like how these all properties of materials plays an important role which uh, in identifying the different objects made of different materials which are made up of more than one material or made up of only a single material and how it is used depends upon the purpose of its use, it is most important and those properties we discuss with these textual questions and other content. And let us do into next class, let us start with our next new chapter called as separation of substances. So, to before to start this chapter, let us go with some discussion, then you will come to know like generally what is this separation of substances. I think you can able to see some figures. And you have just we are going to go with the introduction and we are trying to classify or identify how this separation of substances plays an important role in our everyday life applications. Because even this part also is important where we learn or which we come across in our everyday life applications, everyday instances, in our everyday situations, in our everyday daily life situations and applications we come across this kind of substances which make us the need and the use of separating the substances. So, what is this separation of substances we are going to learn in your next chapter of your chemistry 6th class. So, before to start with the chapter, let us go with some discussion. So, here you can find there is a picture where you can find a strainer. Can you see a strainer children? So, basically why we use a strainer? Mostly why we use a strainer? Yes. So, mostly whenever uh, in your house you as you can find mostly you can find like whenever tea is prepared you can find like when you are trying to separate the tea leaves from tea means once you want to prepare tea. So, definitely you need to add the contents because already you learnt like what all the ingredients or what are the subs, uh, what you say the uh, substances which are required to prepare a tea. Yes. So, when you are trying to prepare a tea, so generally as you know like you require milk, you require water, you require tea leaves, you require sugar. So, when these all contents whatever are listed or whatever I said you like sugar, milk, tea leaves, water. So, these all ingredients are mixed up, are mixed up and they have been trying, uh, they are used for boiling the contents, all these contents need to be mixed up, boiled and heated up so that the tea is prepared. So, during which as you know like we are adding the tea solution. So, you can as you know like milk and water, sugar and whatever we have added in that they get mixed as well. But you will see that the uh, you will find that the tea leaves they gets only they does not get mixed, they get only mixes up but they does not dissolve. So, are we able to take the tea with the same tea leaves? Are you able to take it? We cannot take. So, in such cases what we have to do now? We need to separate, we need to separate tea leaves, separate tea leaves from tea by using a strainer. So, what is the role of a strainer here? Yes, a strainer is used where we are trying to filter out or we are trying to separate some of the particles or some of those substances like in the case of tea you can find those are nothing but those are your tea leaves. So, until and unless if you do not use a strainer, are you able to separate the tea leaves from a tea? No. So, here, here there are some substances or those solutions which you are preparing it, you can find that the all the substances does not dissolve. Only some of the substances will dissolve, but where you will find that the some other substances remains the same after gets mixes in that. So, it is our duty like we need to definitely separate them. So, to separate that we need to go with different uh, methods and different uh, techniques here. 
So, in our this uh, in our chapter separation of substances, we are going to learn like there are some substances, uh, means there are a lot of existing substances out of which the most important substances which ever we come across in our daily life applications, those substances we are trying to separate means those what you say like actually we say them as mixtures also which you are going to learn in our today's session. So, here we are trying to separate those mixtures or what you can say like those substances which are mixed up which cannot be separate which are to be separated from those solutions before we take them. So, in this case as you can find like as tea leaves need to be separated from tea. So, we need to use a strainer now. So, this is one separation technique by using a strainer we are trying to separate the tea leaves from this is one uh, such case, uh, situation which we come across in everyday life, is not it? Definitely you find uh, tea is been taken and everyday tea is prepared and definitely the ingredients whichever are added in that you will find that sugar, milk and uh, water and all get mixed as well and they get dissolved. But once uh, when you are adding the tea leaves, the tea powder which you are going to add, definitely you will find that they get only mixes up with all the, uh, for the taste and for the content of the concentration. But you can find that the still the tea leaves remain same, it is not they does not get mixes, they does not dissolve it. So, in such cases we need to separate them. So, this is one come one among such instant, is not it? Then let us see the other instant, yes. Have you observed this any time like I think you know, as you have to come and miss just heard uh, I think so, but you have not been you have seen this much because this is one type of a technique where we try to separate separate cheese from milk or curd. So, this is actually called as a churner, this is called as one of one called as a churner. It is nothing but like one type of a mixer you can say like as now as now you can see as nowadays you can see uh, different agitator mixers, agitations, uh, the mixer grinders which you have with bleeds and all. So, as you can find actually in olden times and during ancient times they we need to what they need to do means whenever they want to prepare the ghee or whichever you say as a ghee or the important nutrient. So, they need to separate again they need to separate that ghee from the cheese uh, what you say like when they want to have the cheese. So, they need to which is as ghee and all. So, when they need to separate this cheese when they want to obtain cheese. So, they need to separate it from milk or curd. Now, in this case you can see now when cheese is obtained <coughs> In this case you can find the cheese is obtained by churning because this is called as churning. Cheese is obtained by churning either milk, either milk or curd, either milk or curd. So, in this case also like you want to separate the cheese from the mixture of milk or curd. Because when you are doing, uh, when you are going to agitate it, you can see a uh, person or uh, the person who is trying to catch, hold the things and is trying to churn. That is nothing but he is trying to agitate or he is trying to mix it. So, during this case you can find like uh, we are trying to obtain cheese by churning and where we are trying to separate the mixture of milk or curd and trying to obtain cheese. Yes. So, this is also one among such other separation technique where we are using it to separate the cheese from milk or curd, is not it? Are you getting it? So, here there are the different instances or different situations which we come across during which we need to separate them by using some or the other method or some other technique which we use here to separate it. Yes, this is one instance. Then comes the other instant. Now, you can find in this other instant, now you can see suppose when you have been uh, set to get some fruits, vegetables and you are set to go to market and get uh, as its list is given to you and to collect uh, some of the vegetables, fruits and all. So, here like what you are going to do like as you visit to the market definitely you are going to purchase as listed of uh, listed some fruits and vegetables and all those vegetables and fruits you will carry in a bag. So, when you are using uh, when you are visit when you are visit ma visited market and you have collected all the fruits and vegetables as per requirement and you have all been uh, you have collected it and you have purchased and you have uh, kept in a bag. 
Now, while returning to home, after coming to home, definitely you need to separate all the fruits and vegetables which you have been, which you have purchased from the market. So, in this case, what happens now? You can find like these all are mixed together. So, all the fruits you can find mixed fruits and vegetables. So, what all you have purchased? You can find like all the fruits and vegetables which ever were listed or whichever you are trying to get it purchased from market are all mixed up. So, once these vegetables and uh, fruits whichever you have been purchasing are got mixed up, now you need to definitely separate them, is not it? Now, you can find some apples, you can find some uh, onions, you can find some garlic, you can find some uh, leafy vegetables. So, all these vegetables and fruits are mixed up. Now, you need to separate the fruits and vegetables separately and try to show like these are the set of these fruits and these vegetables which I have purchased and you got from the market. So, in order to separate it, what technique you are going to use here? Yes, generally you are going to just use your hand to pick the things, is not it? Here you are not going to use any uh, churner or any strainer. Do we require any strainer here? Yes, we do not require any kind of strainer or because here we do not have any such uh, substances or those particles which are so minute or which are very small that they cannot be separated with a hand. So, here basically what we do generally like as you purchase some of the vegetables and fruits and all from the market and when they get mixed up in the bag. So, once you come to home, well you are returned back from the market, when you come to home definitely you are going to separate them separate them different, separate them as for different as fruits and vegetables, separately you are going to separate them. So, during which when you are separating them, so what you are going to do, just you will use your hand for picking it, is not it, you will use. So, generally I will say that particular method which we call as hand picking, I can say that method as hand picking method. So, here you are using hand picking method, means just be your, your using your hands will separate it, you will separate the apple separately, you will take onion separately, you will keep, you are going to you separate the leafy vegetables separately, the carrot, the beans, whatever you have purchased, so all you are going to separate it as once which are got mixed in the bag. So, this is also one such instant which you are generally going to see when you are, you are being going to market to get the things or if your parents also visit market, definitely you can see once they come to house, definitely are going to separate the things separately and they are going to store it, but they are not going to mix up all the things together and they are go just going to keep it like that, is it it? So, this is also one such instant which we come across in our everyday life. So, these are some of the practical applications or these are the practical uh, situations which we come across, is not it? So, every day as we prefer to, so definitely we need to use a strainer, where strainer is one of the technique by using a strain that is actually we call this filtration, which we learning in a chat which we say basically as filtration, means we are trying to filter, where we are trying to filter the tea leaves from tea by using a strainer. So, this is also an activity and even as you can sign actually this was like an olden terms like as it turn as an all were used, but now you can find these turners are mostly they have been modified by using a machine called centrifuge. So, even a centrifuge is also the machine same like as a churner where you can trying to separate the mixtures or those components present in that where you are trying to obtain the cheese from the curd or milk or curd. In the same way when you go for market, so as you can find when all these uh, fruits and vegetables which got mixed up, you are trying to separate these vegetables and fruits just by using your hands. So, that is the reason you say it is hand picking method. So, in this way there are the different uh, substances which we come across in our everyday practical situations or you can say in everyday life situations where we need to go with one or the other method to separate the components present in that particular method, in that particular situation or in that particular uh, what you say the object or the thing whichever you are going to take it. So, I think you now you have been got the concept of why we need to separate the uh, substances. So, that is the lesson which we are going to learn in our next chapter, which we are going to start its separation of substances. So, in this chapter we are going to see like how we are going to separate the different substances by using different suitable adopted methods or any techniques. 
means like whichever is suitable means for that particular separating uh, if you want to separate that particular substances there are some specific methods or there are some specific adopted methods which we need to use to separate those techniques because we can't use as you like now for example i can't use a strainer to separate the fruits or vegetables i can't use hand picking method to separate the uh, tea leaves with hand can we use our hand to uh, filter the tea powder can we separate can we use our hand as a strainer and can we separate the tea leaves from tea we can't so that's the reason here there are the different separation techniques or different separation methods which we are going to use to separate the different substances by possible adopted suitable methods which we are going to learn in a chapter so let's start with like what how the separation of substances plays an important role how and how it's useful for us to identify or how you can go with the different methods to separate the different substances which you are going to learn in this chapter yes so here like as we started the discussion so we separate components in mixtures for different purposes in our daily life so there are different mixtures so in the same mixtures in the sense here i can go with the examples like tea you can go with different juices or you can say some different solutions so there are some existing uh, what you say like not only with liquids even there are some other solutions also which you are going to get with solids and all also but here like we are trying to separate the components in mixtures for different purposes different purpose in the sense different uses same like in the case of materials and things or uh, less chapter we learned like how different objects are used for different purpose in our daily life so each and every material or every object whichever you are using has its own use and its own purpose same way in this chapter also like you are going to find like when you are trying to separate some of the substances they has its own way and use of separating those components which are present in that particular mixture by suitable adopted methods yes so example like if you for example you can see the different uh, purpose or different situations which we come across apart from that which we discussed before we started with the chapter even we can try you can see like we remove small stones from rice before cooking yes so as once as you know like once rice is harvested and once it's been packed in the bags and all and sometimes what happens you can find some small or some small stones or some pebbles and all maybe and unwanted impurities also can be found in a rice so you definitely you need to clean them before you are cooking it isn't it you can't even cook the stones also along with rice isn't it are you able to do because what happens if it's done it is it won't be cooked also and definitely or when you are eating it you will find that it's also you're getting it also so it gets this germs there and remove worms and husk so for example you can find here like some of the uh, a soil you can find some of the soil now suppose this soil contains soil with impurities soil with some of the impurities so what all kind of impurities you may have like small rocks okay like you can have small pebbles rocks stones or anything like those kind of material uh, those kind of impurities whichever you found in uh, a soil not only in the soil in the case of same if you take rice rice flour or if you take wheat flour if you go with any of such substances you can find those substances are filled with some of the impurities and those impurities can contain any of the small stones pebbles and in such cases definitely you need to go with the sieving so it's nothing but it's this method is called as a sieving it's or nothing but it's some mesh it's a sieve mesh which we say as a sieve mesh size it's also one form of like a strainer which we use for small quantities like in case of uh, liquids as we used to separate tea leaves from tea same way here in such cases also you can find here like this is one method which we call sieving where you are going to find like how the impurities get separated and you are going to get the fine collected you can find fine collected soil free from impurities 
So you can find here that's uh, the soil whichever contains uh, the impurities like pebbles, rocks, stones and all are generally gets purified what you can say gets clear with the impurities when you are going to go with the, some of the adopted method. So here you can see the suitable. So by sieving, can you see here we were using us this method called sieving where you are trying to find found like how these impurities like small pebbles, rocks, stones and all get separated from that and all those impurities get, get collected and separately and the fine powdered material whichever you are willing, whichever uh, you are trying to separate these components which are filled with the impurities are collected separately. Yes. So, before you are going to prepare a roti and all in such cases. So, these all key examples which we generally come across where you need to definitely use this as a saving mesh which you use generally you can find your mothers and all generally they are going to definitely before they start preparing rotis first they are going to finely powder the wheat floor where they are trying to get rid of the impurities or small warts, swarms or whatever the different insects or any small kind of impurities, any dust and all, they all get, get filtered and they get purified, they get separated when your once it is sieved and then they start preparing the rotis by mixing the mixing the wheat flour and making it to a dough and then they start preparing it, is it. So, this is also one of the separation technique because as itself only the wheat flour whichever is available the same thing you cannot take and mix with the water and you can start preparing it because here also you need to definitely do this, uh, you need to go for the sieving process. Once it's the sieving process is done, then you are going to make into a dove and then start preparing the rotis and all whichever you are preferring to have it. Yes. And then next even you can find, uh, as I said, like so you can see some of the impurities. Can you see in the rice? So, you can see some of the impurities in rice also. Impurities present in rice that is nothing but unwanted material. Impurities is unwanted material. So, those unwanted materials like you can find like some black seeds, brownish color. So, those all need to be removed. So, you can find it is nothing but they are used as they go for the sieving, they go for the minute particles. And those particles which can be seen or just we can be removed with our hand, then we go for hand picking method either. But we cannot use any of the again strainers or sieving which is required. If possible, if those particles or those impurities which are so minute which cannot be visible or which cannot be removed with hand, then in such cases, then we go with this kind of sieving and straining type of technique methods. Those kind of separation methods we are going to use it until and unless if you are able to do it, just we go with our using a hand itself. Yes. The next one, the similarly we can always separate impurities from water, tea leaves as tea powder and from tea can you mention some more techniques. So, just we have find, find even we go for, uh, we try to separate even uh, the impurities which are found to be present in water by using filtration technique which you are going to learn in this chapter and already as you know like we are trying to separate the tea leaves that is nothing but the tea powder from tea by using a strainer. And as you can find even you are using churning, uh, you are using a churning process to separate the components of cheese which is where uh, cheese from the butter, uh, from the what you say the butter or milk or the curd which you are going to do, you are in, uh, in such cases then you are using sieving process where you are trying to get rid of the minute particles or those impurities which are present or found in case of rice flour or in wheat flour in case of rice and all. So, there are some other meta, uh, techniques which also we are going to methods which we are going to learn to separate these substances. Yes. Then, so then like the next question comes like why do we actually separate substances? So, why do we separate substances? So, why we need to separate? So, what is the purpose for separating the substances. Let us see. So, first you can see separation process. So, when you are trying to separate some stones from rice, that is nothing but like some pebbles or log rocks or whatever the small stone whichever you found in rice. So, purpose for which we do, we actually do to separate two different but useful components. Okay. Why we are doing here? We are trying to separate the components where you are trying to get rid of all the stones or pebbles or unwanted materials or those all impurities you are trying to get rid of that in such cases where you are going to go for this separation technique. And 
what do we do with the separated components? We throw away the solid components. So, what is the solid component here? It is nothing but your stones. The stones or those pebbles, those unwanted materials, whatever you find, those all are thrown away by using this separating technique where these components, where the solid components are particularly in such case of rice and all in fluorine cases, you can find they are eliminated, they have been removed. In the same way, suppose if you are churning milk to obtain butter, as we learned the cheese or butter when you are trying to obtain it by churning the milk or curd, in such cases what you will do, all the non-useful components, unwanted substances, there are the unwanted substances also. So, those unwanted components are also removed where we throw away the impurities. So, in this case also you can find like the impurities are thrown away and left out with that nothing but the pure form of that butter or cheese which you are trying to obtain. The next comes separating the tea leaves. So, as you know like you are definitely you are going to separate your tea leaves that is nothing the tea powder which you have used to prepare tea. In such cases you can find the impurities to remove the impurities or to remove the harmful components also if any so present in that mixture, in that ingredients which you have added even those are also eliminated or those are also removed along with that and we use both the components. So, in this case both the components in the sense it can be solid or it can be a liquid also, yes. So, in such cases we are trying to find like in the case we said both components they can be the solid impurities or they can be liquid impurities. So, the solid and liquid impurities whichever get mixes or whichever are found in the substances which are harmful to us before we take it. So, that in such cases also we try to go with that suitable separation technique or that particular method which we adopt to uh, use to separate those components present in that mixture. So, this is the reason like why in also here we took only some like general some two, two, three examples which we took like where we are trying to find the reason behind which why that why we need to separate these substances, where we are trying to reason. So, in the same way there are some other substances also which we, we need to know the reason or the reason behind it like why we are trying to separate even those substances also. The next comes like we see that before we use a substance, any of the substance whichever you are trying to use it, first we need to separate all the harmful and non-useful substances that may be mixed with it, definitely. So, when you are trying to use rice. Now, when you want to cook rice, so before you start cooking rice, when your mother starts cooking rice or when you can just see it. So, first we need to see that, that the substance is either contains any of the harmful substances, either it may be dust, it may be soil or it may be pebbles, it may be rocky materials or any of some other unwanted materials also may be present in that substance. So, those kind of substances they first need to be eliminated, means they need to be separated. So, to separate that we need to go with some of the methods here. Then sometimes even we separate useful components if we need to use them separately. And sometimes what happens is along with that when you are trying to go remove some of the unwanted material along with the unwanted materials, even you can see some of the want uh, the, uh, the existing materials in that those substances which not to be which should not go also can be moving out. And the substances to be separated may be particles or particles of different sizes or they can be of different materials. For example, you can see I took the example of some pulses. Now, along with this pulses can you see here there are some other unwanted materials which are different from this. Can you see there can be some other colory impurities, some colored impurities also you can find. So, the colored impurities are nothing but they, they can be like uh, again the colored impurities like stones again pebbles and some other impurities also which you can find. So, definitely before you start cooking it or before you start using it, so first it is our duty to separate these all, what you say these all unwanted materials or whichever we found in this case of material or that substance which you are using it. So, there you can find like as we said like the substances whichever you are using or which are to be separated may be the particles of different sizes or materials. So, they may be of same size or they can be different. Now, you can see this is an actual size apart from this you can see this sizes can be also bigger than that size. So, in that way also we can easily make out. 
bigger than the actual size. So, it can be also bigger than the actual size of those impurities which you can find or which are present in that kind of in such kind of solutions which we take into consideration. So, those also which we need to eliminate in such substances before you try to take it. So, overall we are going with all the different methods or different with different methods and we are trying to separate these components how well they can be separated in such cases and how we are going to use it. And even this may be in the three states of matter. So, whichever the unwanted materials, whichever you are trying to remove or whichever you are trying to go get rid of those as in the form of impurities. So, they can be solid, they can be liquid or they can be gas also. So, in this case you can see when we took the example, this is one form of solid form of matter. So, you can see this is a solid form of matter as impurity, solid form of matter as impurities, isn't it? So, it can be of any form of matter, it can be solid, it can be a liquid, it can be a gas, yes. The next come to the other one of the pictures, so, apart from that there are other separation techniques also which we will be learning. So, first is like green is separated from stalks while harvesting. So, I think generally most you children you know it very well, like during harvesting you can find like how green is separated from stalks by the way you can see. So, you can find here the all the unwanted material gets moved out and you can find the grain collected here, ok. Grain is separated from stalks, you can find the all the stalks and all they get washed away or they get moved, moved away along with the air and that remaining part where you can find like how the other parts gets selected. Have you found any time children this? So, you can just have a look on TV and all even if you have if you are visiting your hometowns and all if any of us among, any of us are among such if you are in farming if you, any of your relatives and any are in the farming or with the farmers you can find easily like how they try to do the separation of this, how they separate the components of this from stock. And then as you know very well like milk or curd is churned to separate to get butter. So, you can find here this is the churner. So, using this churner basically you can find like how milk or curd is churned to separate and get butter. Then the same way we gain cotton to separate its seeds from fiber. So, you can find these are the cotton seeds. So, you can see from how the from cotton seeds how we try to gain and get the cotton. So, you can see here ginning. So, this is the ginning of cotton to obtain the pure cotton from cotton seeds. Yes, that is called ginning machine which we use basically. Actually, apart from that even you can find different machines also just I took one of the example like to, to show like how we try to gin cotton to separate its seeds from fiber. So, even these are also the other separation methods or the techniques components which we basically found or whichever we come across in our daily life situations where we practically use them depending on those methods and those techniques which we are going to use here. Yes. The next comes like as we started with our introduction. So, first let us understand like what are mixtures, what are basically mixtures. So, as like we could take the if, uh, as we started with this we, we took the example of tea. In the beginning of our chapter itself before in the introduction class we introduction itself we took the example of tea. So, as you can find a tea is a mixture of sugar, milk, water and tea leaves. So, in which of the cases like as all these are get mixed up properly or they get dissolved or soluble in that, in out of all these cases like how you are able to separate any of those kind means it, overall it is nothing but it is a mixture where you can able to see like the all the mixtures are already got been or get mixed properly in such cases. Now, you need to separate them. So, how which method or which technique you are going to use to separate those components which are present in one substance as a mixture that which we are going to learn here. So, here have you observed tea being prepared? So, as I said just the example like in all those cases where you can find where tea acts as a mixture, where you can find a tea is mixture of milk, 
like water, sugar and the tea leaves, that is nothing but the tea powder. Yes. So, what substances are used for preparing tea as I showed you just now. So, these are the substances like which we can see mixture, milk, water, sugar, tea, leaves. Yes. So, the listed items are mixtures as they contain more than one substance that combination of more than one substances forms a mixture. So, how we define a mixture or when you can say it is a particularly that particular substance is a mixture here like when you find the combination of more than one substances. So, you can find in case of tea. So, in case of tea, so when a mixture of tea, when your mixture of tea contains milk, water and all. So, you can find there are different substances. They are found to be more than one substance, is not it? You can see some 4 to 5 substances are mixed together. It is not only like only there is only one substance. You can find there are 4 to 5 substances mixed together in such case. So, those kind of combinations of those kind of substances which you can find which is more than one substance forms a mixture. So, some mixtures are natural like soil. So, you can see the examples here like in case of tea you can see milk, water, you need to complete it, sugar or tea leaves. In case of laddu and all what we use again here also you can find sugar, it is oil or whatever which you use for, uh, for making it or which you also says ghee and all then flour etc. Then when you go for lemon juice, so what all we require for lemon juice? Lemon, lemons, water, sugar etc. So, can you see now these are all substances whatever. So, these are the different items. So, you can find like each of the item contains more than one substance. You can see that there is only a one substance which it is made up of. You can see the substances are found which are more they are made up of more than one substance. So, those kind of mixtures, uh, those kind of substances where you can find the combination with more than one is all mixture. So, you can find that some mixtures are natural like soil, is not it? Soil is available in nature, in natural form. So, it says as a soil, is it as a soil. So, some mixtures are also made man made like laddu. So, laddu and lemon juice are all made by man itself, no? Are you getting it from nature? Are you getting the readily available laddus or lemon juice from nature? No. So, it is prepared by man. So, that is the reason you are saying it as man made and where you soil you can find just easily available in nature or the environment in surroundings where we live it. So, that is the reason we say those are natural. So, there are some existing mixtures which are natural and as well as man made also. Yes. So, you can find some list like how to identify the mixtures among the following like milk, tea, sand, turmeric powder, red chili. So, you to identify the mixtures now. So, which are natural or which are man made and from which mixture in each in the examples mentioned above are you able to separate the substances. So, you can see the example like lemon water that is nothing but lemon juice, lemon water, lemon juice, sugar water which is made by man. Same when you go for laddu. So, in case of laddu also as you know we use flour, we use ghee or oil and we use sugar and all. So, in this case also we say this is also one example of man made. If you go for soil, yes, so it is all soil which is naturally available, okay, which contains minerals, which are with some examples and all. So, those minerals also which we basically find. So, here these in the substances whichever we found which are readily available in nature. So, those we go with some of the examples as natural and some whichever we found are found to be with man made like example like lemon juice and all which are made by man. It is not readily available in nature. So, we say they we take the example as in such cases we take example and we are trying to classify like these mixtures whichever we found are of which sort in cases. So, this mixes you have to. So, when you go for turmeric powder and all even this is also natural, even turmeric powder. If you go for turmeric powder, if when you can find turmeric powder also available 
naturally it's from nature it's from plants and all it's not uh, what you say like it's easily uh, means just made by man itself so these are some of the existing materials or uh, those materials which we are substances which we are saying as mixtures so from which of the following mixtures whichever are mentioned above are we able to separate them so what kind of suitable techniques you are going to use here to separate those sections so from which of the following mixtures from which mixtures in the examples mentioned above are you able to separate the substances so you know here you need to find like which of the suitable methods which you can use which of those suitable methods which you are going to use to separate this uh, what do you say the different components which are present in a particular mixture because when we just see them so we are unable to differentiate there or we are not able to uh, find all those components which are mixed up or which are soluble properly in such cases in such mixtures so during that when we are unable to see through our naked eye right? so in such cases what we do when we need to go for some different methods or different techniques where we try to separate those components which are present in that means because the combination of that substances which are found to be more than one are called mixtures so where we try to identify them and we are trying to find like which of the following mixtures are found to be naturally or some are man made so this is how children like we started with your next chapter separation of substances with introduction and we have done with some of the types of mixtures found in nature and found with we found in found with nature and also some with man made and we are trying to find like which kind of components can be which are present in them and how can we separate them or which of the methods which we are going to use it so we'll continue our class in a, we'll continue our discussion in our next class with the different separation techniques which we started in a chapter so till then visit to our website classroom tv dot in for latest videos each and every material and content you are going to get it and try to logging to us always to our website classroom tv dot in and we'll meet in our next class with the continuation of the different separation techniques until then keep watching and enjoy classroom tv mm -hmm.